Welcome in everybody to another episode of Fantasy Football Picks and Bets presented by Prize Picks. I am Lauren Carpenter. You can find me at Stepmom Lauren, and we are heading into week six. It's almost unbelievable. We still have one more game to play here on Monday night for week five. I'm recording this on Monday evening, so whether or not you're listening to this on Monday evening or on Tuesday morning, we still have a great show lined up for you today. We have waiver wire targets, streaming options, injuries we have to go over, and we are also going to touch on our 7-Eleven Challenge prize pick leaderboard. And without further ado, let's hop right on in here. We got Alan W. Dude, you're still in first place. So you have 21 out of a possible 25 correct answers. You are alone, my dear friend here. Um, Alan W., it's... First place, man. Keep rocking it. And we have a few people here tied for third this week at 19, which is Neil F., Joseph W., Ian M., and then William G., you are at uh, 18. So you're in third place. Let's see what we have down here for our zeros, which are always fun to look at. And I have a long time to scroll. If you can tell, I'm still scrolling. That's how many people are in this contest, and it is super duper fun, and I just whizzed right by it. Wow! Okay, we only have three people with zero. Did you accidentally submit five and one of them hit? That would be hilarious. I am really sorry about that. But anyway, Nicholas T, Dale P, and John B, you three are all in last place. Still, we only have three of you tied now for zero. There is a prize for the last place entry. There is a prize for right in the middle, and then there's prizes for one, two, and three. There is a uh, more information on that in the description of this video, but make sure that you go to prizepicks.com to sign up in order to play if you haven't signed up yet already. It's very easy to do so. Go to prizepicks.com, use the promo code MMN, and your deposit of up to $100 is matched. Free money, Super fun. I love playing prize picks. It's my new obsession. I know I've said that before and I'll say it again because it is a ton of fun. And there's still time to get in on our 7-Eleven challenge. It is very easy to do. Simply pick five over-unders. Just don't choose any from the Monday night game because as you can tell, I am already talking about who we have in the leaderboard on Monday. So no Monday night games. But Sunday game's good, Thursday game's good, five over under picks, and you change your bet amount to $7.11. That is how Prize Picks keeps track. They let me know, and then I'm the one that brings all of that wonderful information straight to your ears and eyes if you happen to be watching. Again, prizepicks.com, promo code MMN. There is also a link in the description of this video to make it super duper easy. And just real quick before we head on to our lengthy list of injuries, Pat and I didn't do so well this week. Sadly, we did not. We both got two out of five, even though our options were both uh, different. But let's go ahead and put Pat Mayo's picks up right here. He got Devontae Adams over on a receiving touchdown, which was correct. And then he got Ezekiel Elliott over on a rushing touchdown. Other than that, that was it. Wah, wah. Sad day for Pat. And again, sad day for me too. Let's put mine up here for you. Um, AJ Green, disappointment. DeAndre Hopkins, yay! Derrick Henry, yay! Other than that, mm. Matt Stafford couldn't even rush over five and a half yards. Really? Come on, man. Yeah, so again, I got that one wrong. And Zach Wilson was super duper disappointing. I thought he might have been able to capitalize on a really good performance. He only got 192 passing yards. Sad day, but oh well. We play this game because it's fun, not because we win all the time. Because what's the fun in that? Let's be honest. It's a lot of fun when you always win. But remember, 7-Eleven Challenge, five over-under picks. Set your bet amount to $7.11. Come play along. It's a ton of fun. But we do have to get into injuries, of which there were a lot. And primarily to the poor New York Giants, who might be fielding their second string roster like moving forward. It's very, very sad. I don't know if you saw what happened to Saquon Barkley. He rolled his ankle. And if you are kind of a queasy person, don't look up images of it because it looks like a tennis ball is like coming out of his ankle. It's very gnarly. Um, luckily, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. He is slated to miss at least two to four weeks. Plan on four weeks here just to be on the safe side. And then Daniel Jones took a big hit, the quarterback, for the New York Giants. And um, he's obviously in concussion protocol, but when he got up from that hit, he was all sorts of woozy, tripping around. It kind of looked like he was drooling a little bit. It was kind of scary. So he is in concussion protocol. No, no idea as to what his availability is going to be moving forward. So make some arrangements, which is what 
I am here for. And Kenny Galladay, he also got hurt. Um, he got a knee injury. That one isn't as serious. I don't really know what his status is moving forward. But we still have Darius Slayton, who's out. Sterling Shepard, who's out. Both of them are dealing with injuries. And then on top of that, Kadarius T Tony got himself kicked out because he punched some guy. I mean, luckily, it's not injury-related. But still, man, come on. What are you doing? Poor Giants. Anyway, moving on. Another big injury that is going to take this player out for the season is Juju Smith-Schuster. He had a very significant shoulder injury. He is planning on having surgery, which will be season-ending, so he is done. Um, I mean, Chase Claypool is obviously going to be stepping up big time like he did in the offense against the Broncos that we saw over the weekend. And Clyde Edwards-Alaire, this was another whew, near miss, but he did not have too severe of a knee injury. It is an MCL sprain, so he should miss two to four weeks as well. Uh, so just keep your eye on his status. Again, I'm going to go over some running backs that you can target to uh, make some arrangements to uh, plan for some of these guys being absent. Tyreek Hill suffered a knee injury, but it was considered minor. So I guess keep an eye on his status. It was kind of like, yeah, it's no big deal. Same thing with Tom Brady. He hurt his thumb, but he should be fine for the Thursday night game. Joe Burrow, he was released the same night from the hospital after he was admitted for a throat contusion. Obviously not really that big of a deal. He himself said it wasn't a big deal. So luckily that is also a swing and a miss when it comes to an injury, which is always a good thing when it comes to these. Um, but interesting news here. Uh, Joe Mixon, who had that high ankle sprain, I guess was totally fine. So... There's that. But Samaj P. Ryan, he has been placed on the COVID-19 reserve list. So if you have Samaj P. Ryan in a deep league and you need to start him, keep your eye on his availability. Oh, and unfortunately, uh, Max with two X's. Max Williams, this makes me very sad. Um, he may have suffered a season-ending knee injury. I do not know his status as of this time tonight on Monday. So if you have Max Williams, I am very sorry, but it looks like duh, that is not a good situation for the Cardinals. And then two more here, uh, because there's a huge long list, but these are the ones that are kind of the most right in your face that you might need to worry about for fantasy. Quintez Cephas, wide receiver for the Lions. He likely broke his collarbone. So that's a situation that you'll need to keep your eye on. And then Damian Harris, another... Uh, Injury that ended up not being that big of a deal. He did get x-rays on his chest and it came back negative. So it looks like he is not going to be missing a ton of time if he does miss time. I'm not even sure if he will miss time. It's just going to be pain tolerance here, which is good news moving forward. But with all of these injuries, plus with bye weeks coming up, everybody, that's right. We have bye weeks coming up already. Hard to believe. But we need some options that we can target on the waiver wire. And that is why you're in here listening to me drone on and on. So let's jump right into our waiver wire targets for wide receivers. Um, this one is interesting, my first one here. But I feel it necessary to say Jamison Crowder, wide receiver for the Jets. I know his game wasn't really that great in London, but London games are weird. Just be aware, they do have a bye in week six. So when they go to London, they get a week off. So he does have a bye, but if you have some room and you want to stash him, he he can be a PPR monster. It's just going to depend on how much Zach Wilson can, can really get his feet underneath him and play boring football and hit Jamison Crowder and Corey Davis. He is 39% rostered. After that, they play New England and Cincinnati, both very difficult matchups, but hey, when when you're desperate, sometimes you got to go for those guys. And then we have Tim Patrick. He seems to always be on my waiver wire segment, but that's okay because I love Tim Patrick. He is 31% rostered wide receiver for the Denver Broncos. Um, he had another double-digit fantasy game, and he didn't even find the end zone this time. He had seven receptions on nine targets for 89 yards. Um, his schedule coming up isn't fantastic. They play Las Vegas and then Cleveland, but then they do face Washington after that. So I do like that matchup, plus out of necessity because of Jerry Judy's injury. It's Corlin Sutton and Tim Patrick. You know, so out of volume alone, he is definitely worth a roster and worth a start. And then speaking of the Giants, they really need someone to catch the ball. I'm also going to bring up their tight end when I get to the tight end segment. But Kadarius Toney, um, he's only 17% rostered, and that is not going to last long, my friends. He is going to be swooped up off the waiver wire as soon as everyone gets the running backs that they want to get. 
But, again, they need someone to catch the ball in New York. He had 13 targets, 10 receptions, and 189 yards. That's crazy. It totaled 24.6 points in PPR. He's a very versatile wide receiver. I like him a lot. I especially like him now because Mike Glennon, who is the backup quarterback for the Giants, really just had to force feed him. Um, they, it's Again, this is another schedule that is not really that great until like three weeks out. They face the Rams, then they get the Panthers, Panthers, then they face Kansas City. So I do like that Kansas City matchup. And you know what? I mean, Carolina was exposed by the Philadelphia Eagles right there. So Carolina may have some opportunity. I don't love it, though, but it's there. And if he's the only one who can catch the ball, pick him up. I mean, definitely pick him up if you can make room for a wide receiver or you need a wide receiver. Kadarius Tony all day long. Now we have a, a pretty long list for running backs, which is usually rare, but we do have some opportunity because of some of these injuries. First and foremost, because of the Clyde Edwards-Alaire situation with his MCL sprain, Daryl Williams for the Chiefs. He is only 17% rostered. It gets very confusing with the D. Williams. I totally get it. Same thing with the D. Johnsons when Duke Johnson was a thing. Daryl Williams. He's likely the only D. Williams that's available on the waiver wire, so you shouldn't get too confused there. 17% rostered for the Chiefs. Um, CH is going to miss maybe two weeks or so, I'm thinking, but even if he misses longer, Daryl Williams will be able to slide right in there. He was also effective on his own, so he has some standalone value for you there. He had five rush attempts for 27 yards. He also had five targets, three receptions, and 18 yards. Um, this is something that, you know, you need him. You need to pick up a running back. I believe he is the one that you're going to want to pick up first and foremost when it comes to your waiver wire targets. They play Washington, Tennessee, and the Giants. This matchup is not, you know, fly off the page amazing, but it's also not terrible. So there is absolutely opportunity for Williams to make an impact for your fantasy team if you need somebody to fill in for your running back position. And another one here, too, is Devontae Booker. Um, he is not going to be a long-term asset, so I wouldn't waste a ton of fab on him. But if you have some room, or maybe if somebody's already swooped up Daryl Williams, he is only 7% rostered. Uh, and obviously, Saquon Barkley is going to miss quite a bit of time. But Booker had 16 carries for 42 yards and a rushing touchdown. Then he had four uh, targets, excuse me, I only said four reception on three targets. That would be pretty amazing. But four targets, three receptions, 16 yards, and a receiving touchdown. He totaled 19.3 points in full PPR. And again, with no Daniel Jones, it's going to be Mike Glennon. So they may be relying on the run game a little bit more heavily than usual. So Devontae Booker, he's at least going to get the volume for you there. I also like him as well. And then another one that is interesting to me because he's been questionable after a big blow-up 10 reception game with the Buccaneers, Giovanni Bernard. He's still a thing. And Tom Brady seems to like to target him, especially in the red zone. Uh, he only had four carries, but at least he had a carry this time, for 21 yards, and he had two targets, two receptions, 14 yards, and a touchdown. He's obviously touchdown dependent. He's not going to have a ton of volume with Leonard Fournette there. But either way, at only 16% rostered, and if you're desperate, you might want to try Giovanni Bernard in PPR scoring formats because I have a feeling this might be more of a trend than it is more of a fluke because Tom Brady really likes to pass the football. So I do like... Giovanni Bernard, I think he's very sneaky. I also think he's very sneaky in DFS lineups moving forward. And two other names I want to give you as well to keep your eye on. Khalil Herbert for the Bears. I know we talked about Damian Williams, but Khalil Herbert, even though his stat line didn't look all that pretty and he didn't fly off the page with a ton of fantasy points, he still got usage. And I think that once he gets involved, Khalil Herbert could become a thing. He is the... Uh, I guess he's the RB2 now because David Montgomery's out. He was the RB3 for the Bears and also for the Chiefs, Jarek McKinnon, someone else you should keep your eye on. I like both of those two guys, but they may be available after your waivers have run. So if you have a priority and a need to start right now, I would definitely target Daryl Williams or Devontae Booker. But if you have a little bit more space, maybe you have some room and you want to stash either of those two, Khalil Herbert and Jarek McKinnon, not bad additions at all. All. And then let's hop into our tight end segment. Like I mentioned before, the Giants need people to catch the football. And Evan Ingram, I know he also hasn't been super duper explosive, but he is only 31% rostered. He had four targets, four receptions, and 55 yards. If he scores a touchdown, he has a great day in fantasy for the tight end position. Um, 
Yeah, this is another matchup situation that I don't love. The Rams, the Panthers, as we mentioned before. But again, Kansas City. That one is pretty nice. Kansas City has allowed a lot of fantasy points to pretty much every single position on the football team except for, like, the punter. Simply because we don't score the punter. But if you do, tell me what league that is because that is really, really cool. Another name, Dan Arnold. Okay, for the Panthers, he could have had an even better game than he than he did, and he only finished with 7.4 points in full PPR, but he did have eight targets, which I really like. Eight targets, six receptions, 64 yards. If Christian McCaffrey is back, I don't know what his usage is going to look like, but... It's the tight end position that we're talking about here. He is only 4% rostered, so if you're in deeper leagues or you're desperate, you might as well take a shot. Sam Darnold's throwing the ball a lot. They face Miami, then they have a bye, and then they play Seattle. It's not awesome, it's not terrible, but again, this is a warm body if you need to fill in at the position. And another one that's even more kind of sus, if you will, is Ricky Seals-Jones, tight end for Washington. He is only 2% rostered. Again, this isn't our super deep leagues that we're looking at, or if you're incredibly desperate. But with Logan Thomas out, Taylor Heineke needs another option to throw to. Curtis Samuel is also banged up again. But Ricky Seals-Jones, okay, eight targets. That's that's crazy. I like that. I like that kind of volume. Eight targets, five receptions, 41 yards. Again, if he gets a touchdown, which he very easily could, um, you're talking a great fantasy game from Ricky Seals-Jones. Also keep in mind for your DFS lineups for a value play. They are going to play Kansas City, Green Bay, and Denver. I love that schedule for the tight end position. So not only does Ricky Seals-Jones have a need to fill there for Logan Thomas and Curtis Samuel, if Samuel misses time, he has a great Great matchups coming up here over the next three weeks. So now that we have those waiver wire targets for the running back wide receiver and tight end position, and if you really want to be persnickety, wide receiver running back tight end position, I can get the order correct. Let's hop into some streaming options for your quarterback position and for your defense special teams, which we'll just refer to as defenses to make my life just slightly easier. Granted, I'll still probably mess it up. Um, I don't love the options here for quarterbacks. I'll just come out there and tell you right now, it's a wasteland. I don't like it. None of these really say to me like yay except for one and that's who I've been pounding the drum for a while and it's Taylor Heineke he is still only 16% rostered and he is going up against the Kansas City Chiefs I'm picking on the Kansas City Chiefs because they bleed fantasy points like I said earlier to everybody so he had a very bad game against New Orleans we all kind of saw that coming simply because of New Orleans defense Um, that was a weird game right that like didn't Washington know that they should like jump up when there's a Hail Mary and maybe try to you know get it from Marquez Callaway I don't know that was a very strange situation that I saw there but either way the Chiefs have allowed the second most points to opposing quarterbacks so Taylor Heineke number one QB streamer other than that we're looking at desperation plays and one of them is going to be Geno Smith now I know it's like okay well there are other backup quarterbacks Lauren I totally get it but Geno Smith looked very impressive when he filled in for Russell Wilson and his interception was not his fault Tyler Lockett fell over and he was like oh I was tripped you weren't buddy you fell over it's totally cool happens to me daily but either way Geno Smith looked good in fact he outscored Russell Wilson when he came in relief after Russell Wilson blew up his finger and uh so that's kind of a thing who knows how long Russell Wilson is going to be out I have heard conflicting stories about the length of it so I'm not even going to try to speculate on this video check out Pat Mayo's video every Friday that he does to get you prepared for the weekend slate of games but Geno Smith 1% rostered they are playing Pittsburgh Now, this is a little tough because T.J. Watt's a monster. He is a monster. He hits people hard. He was last year's sack leader. This is no joke. But, again, we are talking about desperation plays here. I like Geno Smith because he, he was drafted. He was drafted to be a starter. And he hasn't played in, like, four years. And he came in and he lit the team on fire targeting Lockett, targeting D.K. Metcalf. These are our fantasy relevant options that we really want to see. So, Worst case scenario, Geno Smith, why not? I mean, obviously, if you have better options, you want to play him. But this is what we're talking about, about how much I don't love these options on your streaming options for the waiver wire. It's just very stinky. Same thing here for the defense. 
Green Bay, I, I don't love this either, but Green Bay is 25% rostered, and they're playing the Bears with Justin Fields, who is giving up opportunities to being you know stopped, getting sacked. There is some chance here that Green Bay can can step up, even though the Bengals like torched them, which was a great game too. Oh my God, you had one job to kick a field goal, okay? Both of you guys, figure it out. Either way, the Bears have allowed the eighth most points to opposing defenses. So that is something to keep in mind for Green Bay if you are streaming the position. The next one is Miami. They are 15% rostered and they are playing Jacksonville. We all know what's going on in Jacksonville and it's a whole lot of losing. So Miami has the chance to step up when it comes to kind of the similar situation with Justin Fields. Rookie quarterback here with Trevor Lawrence. Interceptions, fumbles, missed opportunities, and hopefully maybe put that little win in your belt as well. And Jacksonville has allowed the second most points to opposing defenses. And finally, before I let you all go, the Bengals. Are they super legit? Because I love the Bengals this year. Plus, I just really love Joe Burrow, so that doesn't hurt. They are 9% rostered, and they are facing the Lions. Oh, can someone please unbreak my heart for Dan Campbell? I just want to go give that man a hug, but... Talk about playing with heart and playing with integrity. That team has something special. And even though it doesn't show it on the stats because they're 0-5, come on. I have a really good feeling about this franchise over the next few years that even if they're not a winning franchise, they're still going to be fun to watch. But either way, let's hope they turn things around, but not before you pick up the Bengals and play them against the Lions. Um, Jared Goff likes to throw interceptions. We'll just leave it at that. And the Lions have also allowed... Uh, the 10th most points to opposing defenses. So that's all you have from me. It's uh, kind of a stingy week for the waiver wire, except when it comes to those running back options. Don't forget, if you haven't done so already, please sign up for prizepicks.com. Use the promo code MMN or use the link in the description of this video. Have fun with us. I love prize picks. Take advantage of our 7-Eleven challenge. Five over under picks. Change your bet amount to $7.11. Also, don't forget to check out all of the amazing content that we have coming out on Mayo Media Network. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Don't miss our guy Griff breaking down your Thursday night games coming up. Then we have Pat Mayo who comes out with his Friday stuff. I mean, it's his network because of course he'd have some stuff. Every day, every day we have new fun things. In fact, you're going to see me again on Wednesday when we take a little bit of a snorkel into our dumpster dives and whatever free agency streamers might be available for you heading into week six. Thank you so much for tuning in, and again, I'll see you on Wednesday.